Hey, hey, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian, super excited. My Armin Strom Gravity Water is back from its five month long service trip to the manufacturer in Switzerland. And we are going to do some exciting things in this video. We're gonna talk Armin Strom as a company. We're going to take an up close look at the watch and talk technical details about it. And I'm going to give you a special look into the service of this watch, thanks to the help from Armin Straub. Let me explain. But first, if you like what you see, consider subscribing, hit the bell if you want updates. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications for regular photos of watches and watchmaking, and visit my website, watchcomplications.com. In the description below, you will see a timeline so you can jump around to any specific part of this video and also a link to the blog post on watch complications that accompanies this video where you can see dozens of pictures of the watch itself and the service process. Right out of the gate, I wanna give a huge thank you to Armin Strom and specifically Claude, co-founder and watchmaker at Armin Strom and Theory, their head of marketing. They were phenomenal in communication with me about this. They have given me permission to use their photos and they gave me photos of the service process i mean it is such an amazing thing and that's where i'm going to start is let's talk about arm and strong as a brand okay so a little bit of background and context this is the brian and the grill series if you haven't watched any of the earlier videos particularly the most recent one go back and watch some of that it will give you context for what's going on i am after my grail most watch enthusiasts have this you know mostly unattainable watch that is man, I would love to eventually have that in my collection for me that is the Armin Strom Mirrored Force Resonance Water it's a watch that's no longer manufactured all most of their watches are limited editions and so I'll have to find one second hand at some point but that's what I would really like to have but in that process I've bought cheapo stand-ins to you know give me that look and feel of the design this past year watch buying it was a little bit different for me and for probably a lot of other people because of the covid situation but there was an armstrong gravity water which is not quite as technically advanced as the mirrored force resonance it's kind of a just a different level but it has the same case and dimensions it has the same sort of general color palette and look about it and i was like you know, that would make a reasonable stepping stone to that mirrored force resonance. Now the watch was listed in excellent condition. I bought it and as soon as it arrived, what do I do with my watches? I get the macro lenses on and I start taking an up close look at them. And when I got to the case back, I noticed there was quite a bit of debris on the inside. There were a couple locations on the micro rotor gear train that had bushings, metal bushings in it instead of jewels. And I thought that was a little bit strange. So I looked up online, I saw pictures of this particular watch with jewels in those locations. And so it gave me the sense that, well, maybe jewels are missing or something's wrong. Some, someone's been in this case, it wasn't the manufacturer, it wasn't an authorized service center because they wouldn't put it back out there um, into a client or customer's hands in that sort of condition. A service on a watch like this isn't cheap. In fact, it costs more than many watches that are out there. And I talked with the dealer, talked with people directly at Armin. What was worked out was a courtesy service. And that's really the first big thing, um, you know, was sort of just an amazing gesture on the part of the manufacturer to be willing to, to do that um, with the circumstances being what they were. Now, five months is a long time, but every time I checked in, they were patient, they were kind, and it just exceeded my expectations. Now maybe eventually I'll get to my Mirror Force residence. Maybe I'll get to see one in the flesh at some point. Um, I've had some conversations about that uh, with the manufacturer, but we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll eventually find one and get there. Uh, but in the meantime, I have this amazing watch. And so let's talk a little bit more about Armin and the watch. You know, there's something to be said for small independent brands. You know, there are the Rolexes of the world where you can build a good relationship with an AD. You can feel really cared for, you know, if you want to put it that way. But at the end of the day, you're dealing with the dealer. You're not dealing with the manufacturer. Uh, the manufacturer doesn't know or care who you are <laughs> generally. There are a lot of things I wasn't expecting with this process. And one of those was to talk directly with people at Arm and Strong. Like I, that thought never went through my mind that someone there would care to talk to a customer uh, that 
was having this particular issue in a meaningful way, in a constructive way, in a very personal sort of way. And that's something I really learned through this process. And I don't see Armin just as a brand because of what happened. This really goes down to customer interactions, not just customer service, but just you don't just buy an Armin watch, for example. The people that have established this brand, this company, they like to call it a manufacturer which says something by what terminology they're using. This isn't about buying a watch. Uh, this isn't about buying a brand like you could with the Rolexes, the Tudors, etc., etc. This is about buying a watch maker, almost. This is about buying into something much more fundamental. They have such a care for this mechanical art form and the fact that they are watch makers and they are so focused on that aspect of it, that, that technical art form, that's what you're buying into. It sounds kind of weird and it's even hard to explain. I don't see them as a brand. They are a watch manufacturer and that runs a lot deeper. The people running the company, managing the company, they're watchmakers, doing the design, they're watchmakers. Uh, they're obviously different <laughs> categories of employees and stuff like that there. Um, but they all have this just love and appreciation for the personal side, for the technical side. And they have internalized that. It's not just some transaction from a business standpoint. Like you can see that the, the watchmaking drives everything, the design, Everything is well thought out. It's just this very personal love and connection with the watches themselves, the way they talk about the watches, the way they would talk about it in just an email back and forth, that this is something more than just a watch on the wrist. Then also they care about the customer in that way. You're not just a customer. You're a person wearing one of our watches. Now I could go on and on about it, but let me tell you what they were willing to do. One, the service. Two, I was invited to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Claude. The co I mean, for someone who's really an amateur, um, for someone who's learning everything they can, my profession is something different, um, and but I've learned everything I can about watches and watchmaking. You know, I'm going through that process on my own, is uh, to be able to meet and have a personal conversation with a watchmaker and co-founder of this just amazing uh, company that makes beautiful watches was just just it blew my mind and it was it was a fun conversation um, and then they offered to provide pictures throughout the service and then to use any of the pictures, both stock photos and, and the pictures you're gonna see in this video and on the blog post that their watchmaker uh, that worked on my uh, watch was gonna take the time to take pictures while going through the process to provide it so I can share it with you uh, in this video. That was an offer that they made and I, it's not that I asked for it. You know, it's, they, they offered, they said, hey, would you like if, if we did this? And I was like, yeah, like, let's do it. And that sort of just personal care toward the watch, toward the person wearing the watch, I'm avoiding the use customer or client because it's, it's beyond that, is just a snapshot, right? It's just a little bit of insight into the psyche of Armin Strom, what's going on there, the type of people they are. They are good people and they are good watchmakers. And if you are ever in the position to get one of their watches, both you know personally, financially, etc., do it. You will not regret it. By the way, speaking of watchmaking and technical capability, Armin Strom is this wonderfully collaborative brand, works with a lot of other companies, particularly when it comes to skeletonization, and has just done wonderfully at uh, being part, I think, of the watchmaking community. They just released a new watch called the Tribute One. Ugh, it's beautiful. They've gone into the dress watch category. Not only that, they have made a watch that's really accessible. Now, it's still quite a bit of money, 
So I don't want to underplay that. These things are not cheap for a lot of people. But when it comes to whole horology, we're not talking 50, 60, 100, 200 thousand dollar watch. We're talking something that's in that you know 10 to 20 thousand dollar range. Something that someone's going to get one really nice dress watch, maybe as like a career milestone, that kind of thing. The fact that they have made the tribute one, and it's this watch that is from an amazing brand. It's it's whole horology through and through and that it is at a price point that is accessible to a lot of people. And they're gonna have other models of this coming. The first edition is limited to 25 pieces and that's because that barrel bridge on the front on dial side is of solid white gold and polished uh, to perfection. The fact that they're gonna have more of these and those are gonna be in stainless steel. I th I'm assuming that the price might be a little bit lower. Uh, and if, if they're not as limited editions as this, it's just phenomenal to see them getting into that dress category. Uh, it's phenomenal to see them getting at a price point where someone could get this sort of a watch at a career milestone or for a significant event. And, and it's something really special. It's not mass produced. It's horology. It's just a, it's just a step above most of the things that you're going to find out there in the luxury watch market. And particularly when it comes to gray market prices on particular brands, whereas this is going to cost you less money, and it's a whole different ball game of quality. It's a whole different ball game of of customer interaction. It's again, it's not buying into a, a, a brand, you know, for some sort of showmanship or to you know say, hey, look, I've got one of those too. It, this is about a person and their watch. Yeah, take a look at the Tribute one, maybe even consider buying one, and then we'll see what other variations of this they come out with in the future. Looking forward to that. All right, so big question from the previous video in the Brian the Grill series is, was this watch missing jewels? Let's talk about that and walk through the service process and get an up-close look at this beautiful watch that I don't know if I could let it go even if the Grail actually shows up in my life. Let's do it. All right, so in the Lost Jewels video, I gave a look at the watch. And so what I wanna do here is give the highlights and show the service process photos. So here's what this thing is looking like after service. It's nice and clean. There was a little bit of debris um, on the micro rotor. You could see it on the back plate there, that kind of stuff. But this is looking pristine condition after getting back from the service. Any little bits that needed polished have been uh, redone. So highlights, service, and we'll get it under the macro lens, which is something I didn't do in the last video. And let me explain what's going on with the jewels. First, the clasp. This clasp has got to be probably the favorite on any of my watches. It's pressure fit, simple clasp. The way it connects to the strap, pretty simple. It's uh, got just a simple pin that goes through whichever hole you want based on your wrist size. And this is just a beautiful, genuine alligator strap. I love that it's got this what called horned alligator strap um, on both sides. Just a unique look. It's a thick strap, but it's still comfortable. It maybe doesn't necessarily look like it would be. Thick leather straps often are not that comfortable. This is. And part of that has to do with, you know, tapering essentially. This is a big watch. This is 43 millimeter diameter. It's got a significant height on it, and you want that height sort of starting off where those lugs are and then tapering down, give you wrist comfort, but the clasp makes all the difference. And so it's pressure fit, uh, butterfly clasp, both sides, and you can see it's got these uh, white stones, really, that's what I think they are. I haven't really looked up close at them to see what material it is, but it's some sort of smooth stone. And you can see that there's notches cut out in the inside of, of the clasp and it just pressure fits, snaps, easy to put on, take off. And I think it's one of the coolest things. It's just an easy clasp. A lot of clasps are a difficult thing um, on a lot of watches. Of course, Armin Strom is known for their skeletonization. You can see the micro rotor from the dial side. We've got the barrel, we've got this offset, small seconds. Everything is just sort of a little bit off center. And you've got the nameplate over here on the right side of the watch. Again, just a unique look. It's kind of what you're gonna get with any of their watches. Now, the issue I had when this arrived from the dealer initially was it was described as in excellent condition, but there was lots of debris. 
let me throw up a couple pictures that show what that looked like. Or you can go back and watch again the previous video where you can see it. But there was debris all through the, the main gear train, through the micro rotor gear train. There was just stuff across the bridges. It looked like something had exploded <laughs> inside of the case. And what I thought was a culprit, let me get my little tool here, was these two locations on the micro rotor gear train. So of course the crown's over here and you can see how this gets to the barrel and then back to the micro rotor. So the big question is what's the story with these two locations that have, you can see metal bushings as opposed to jewels. I had looked up online and saw that there were pictures of the case backs of this uh, gravity line of watches that had jewels in those locations and then mine didn't and there's debris everywhere it seemed to be originating from those locations so gave me the sense that something is up with this again i had this amazing conversation with claude and he described to me what was going on in this situation one confirmed the fact that someone else had been in the case that was not them that was not an authorized manufacturer cleaning it was somebody had been in the watch either to, I don't know, tinker with it, to get it serviced, but it didn't go through the right channels. Second thing is, what about these locations on the rotor train? Should these be jeweled? Well, early releases of this watch, so the first ones in the series off the line, did have jewels in those locations. That's why I was seeing pictures of them with jewels as I was doing searching online. This is a micro rotor, okay? And... Micro rotors aren't extremely common. You can see it in there, micro rotor. Okay, a lot of watches have a much larger rotor, right? It takes up almost the entire uh, diameter of the movement, about half of the width uh, of the diameter, and it rotates around. But it's essentially a half circle, and it's a much larger rotor. Micro rotors are a little bit less common because they offer a technical challenge, and that is, because they are smaller, and because of the ratios being different across the train, it introduces a different type of pressure on the rotor train, um, on the winding, uh, and everything about keeping this mainspring charged. Now, I thought maybe someone had either tried to replace them with some other sort of brass bushing, or that the jewels had been removed, but these are actually copper beryllium, which is what they used to, they transitioned from using jewels initially, but after a little bit of time they realized that's not gonna work as well and they transitioned it to copper beryllium bushings for the micro rotor gear train. The reason why is because of the pressure on the jewels. You can put too much pressure on a jewel and they're, they're awful tiny and yes, they're, they're strong stone, but they can crack, uh, they can chip and because of that tension, because of pressure on the jewels, they decided that because of the, the diameter of axis, it's so strong that they would put copper beryllium bushings in here in the rotor gear train instead. Now that's a little bit of technical watch speak. I'm not gonna go in more depth on that, but you can read more about micro rotor gear trains and maybe you'll get a little bit more insight into that particular topic. I wanted to keep it sort of even keeled for both my just watch enthusiast and my watchmaker audience. So my initial thinking of, hey, this Grail watch has lost its jewels, wasn't completely off base. It was a little bit of half and half, you might say. That's because initially these watches did have jewels in those locations, That's why there's pictures of them out there, but they did end up changing it over to this copper beryllium and someone had been inside of the case, but they've cleaned it up. They've done uh, a great, wonderful top to bottom service on this. And as I said in the previous Brian the Grill video, I gave a look at the watch, but what I didn't do was put it under the macro lens. And now that this thing is cleaned up, that's what I wanna do is give you a chance to look at the, the beauty of this watch. And hopefully that will give you even more appreciation of it. I know it does me looking at this thing up close. Of course, many of these components are done by uh, CNC, but also a lot of handwork and polishing uh, goes into these whole horology pieces. That's what we want to take a look at. This is the gravity water, so you have the water droplets across the back. And the time it takes to do that is just phenomenal. Every different angle, light, 
refraction makes it look a little bit different. It's nice knowing this is back from a fresh service. This thing will be good for years. You can see the perlage around the balance wheel. But you get these distinct, you know, contrasts between polished portions, brushed, and then you get this sort of like sandblasted uh, portions. The polishing, right, on the screws that's not quite, you know, black polished, where, you know, it only appears black or white, you know, straight on or with light contrast, but on this particular piece, anyway. But it's just this insane detail. See the escapement there. By the way, I'm wearing this thing all the time, so if you see dust and debris, that's just on the outside of the case. Of course, you can see number six out of a hundred for this gravity water. Got again, the contrast between the brushed and the blasted. I did take a lot of macro pictures, and those are posted up on the blog post, which you can find a link to in the description below. They've done beveled polishing around the edges. I particularly love this section. It's just beautiful. All these different points. Almost looks like a holly leaf, uh, to be honest. And it just looks great, those beveled edges, polished. Cannot get tired of looking at the back of this watch, just saying. I want to show you the crown. Again, contrast between polished and a blasted look. And then we've got the polished bezel and edge of the case back while the side of the case is brushed vertically. Of course, very large lugs. And we have this lip here. Some people like it, some people don't. It doesn't bother me. I thought it would bother me a little bit, but it doesn't. Uh, but that's a point where you could get something engraved if you had wanted, if you bought a watch with this particular bezel on it. Again, these concentric circles that are brushed and patterned. Got the micro rotor again, the perlage in there. Got the nameplate, Marvin Strom. The printing is spectacular, as you would expect on this kind of timepiece. By the way, I guess I hadn't mentioned, this thing has a 100-hour power reserve, so it's a four-day about power reserve. And I, I've noticed that because I'll set it down, I'll wear something else for a day or two, I'll come back and this thing will still be running. And that winds up fast, uh, to be honest. You can wear this just a little length of time through a day, and that thing's going to go for several days. Uh, it's amazing how efficient the arm and strong movements are. It's one of the things that they are known for. So what's loomed on this is the hour and minute hand. It's about all you need, to be honest. And it looks great. I'll throw up a picture of that. There's this beautiful complexity, but at the same time, simplicity about this sort of a design. But I wanted to give you an up-close look, and there we are. Let's check out. So speaking of jewels right now, this is one of the jewels of my collection. And I'm so thrilled to have it. And I'm so thankful for people at Armstrong Claude Theory. Thank you for taking care of the watch and just communicating with me, helping make this content possible. Just, just thank you. For all you watching, whether you're just an enthusiast who loves collecting watches or just interested in it, if you're into watchmaking, I hope that you found something entertaining, useful, and just sort of just interesting uh, in this video, particularly the service process. I know it's a little different following it through in pictures with sort of, you know, the voice description and whatnot. If you want to see the pictures, go to watchcomplications.com. Link is in the description below and consider uh, subscribing to the, the feed there. Consider subscribing here. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. We'll see where this grill hunt takes me. For right now, I'm pretty content, pretty satisfied. Maybe I'll eventually get to look at a mirror forest residence. But for now, I'm out.